So today marks the release of Elementor Pro 2.2 and with it some new updates and some new features. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate what's new and what's been updated so you can get a head start on what to expect from the latest version. So first off, we have the Evergreen Countdown Timer. Now this has been updated to make sure that you have consistency based upon whoever visits the website and when they visit it. So in other words, if I visit it today and it shows me 29 days, 23 hours and so on, if someone else visits it, they will see the same countdown timer. This gives you consistency across everybody that visits the site. There's also a little cookie that's stored with this so whenever I go back, it'll know that I've been there once and it'll update the information correctly for me. So we've gone ahead and hopped over into the dashboard, opened up the page, and let's take a look at how easy it is to insert and control the way this countdown timer is now going to work. So let's just come over and search for the widget. So we'll do a countdown, and there's our option. So drag that over, drop it into the location. As you can see, it pre-fills this out now with a range of data and information. So looking at the left-hand side, you can see we have a couple of different options when it comes to the type of countdown timer we want. We can have due date, or we can have evergreen timer. We can pick and choose exactly what we want in there. We then have different options depending upon which version we choose. So the Evergreen Timer allows us to choose the hours, the minutes, and how we want to view this information. If we jump over to the due date, you can see we can put in the date and time in the format that's required, and then we can actually see this countdown accordingly. So whatever you choose, we'll have the relevant information on there. So we can see 47 hours. And if we come down, you can see we can then go and control the way this is displayed. We've got the block option, or we can go for inline. Whichever you choose to fit in with the design that you're working with is fine. You then go through and you can choose which options are going to be displayed or hidden. So you can see we've got the days, hours, minutes, seconds. We can also control the labels or we can assign custom labels. So if we disable that, you can see it now just puts a plain blank countdown timer in there. We can put that back on or we can set, set custom labels. You can see days, hours, minutes, seconds. So if you're working in a different language or you want to use a different countdown sort of criteria, you could do exactly that by using the relevant options in here. Then you've got the option for what happens when the actual countdown expires. And this is really useful because you don't want this to just sort of show up and go to zero if you're using the evergreen timer or other form of countdown timer. You want something to happen where there's a message that pops up and says it's sold out or you can do other things. So you can see if we click on the action after expire, we've got three options. We can redirect, so we can redirect them to a page to say you've missed out on this offer, yada, yada, yada. Or we can do things like we can hide this so the countdown timer will no longer display, or we can show them a message. So we say show message, you can see it opens up a new box. We can use dynamic information if we want to. So we could tie this into some additional information anywhere on our site and use dynamic data, or you can just simply put in your own message. If you choose the other option, which would be something like to hide, you can see that just has no options associated with it. And finally, if we come through and say redirect, you can see we can now go through and either use a dynamic URL. So again, we've got dynamic options, or we can put in the URL that we want to go in there, or we can start typing and choose from the options. So it's very, very easy, very straightforward. If we jump over then to the styling options, you can see we can do things like we can style the boxes and the content. So we want to get rid of the background color. You can see we can simply set that to transparent. We can do things like then apply borders if we want to, choose different background colors, spacing between the various different elements. You can see we can easily just adjust that to get exactly what we want to fit exactly how we want it into our design. And then if we come down to the content, you can see we can then go through and style the colors. So we can set any kind of colors that we want and any kind of typography in the way you'd expect expect with the easy useful interface for Elemental. Finally, if we jump over to the advanced section, we've got a ton of options available in here. We've got advanced, we can set our margins and paddings where you'd expect. Pretty cool, pretty easy to use and some really good worthwhile updates, especially if you want to create a sense of urgency on your website. So next up, we have the star rating option. Now I covered this briefly in a previous video. This isn't specific to the Pro version of Elementor. This is in core, so you'll have access to this whether you're using the paid for version or the free version. But there's been some slight updates. So let's just drag and drop that into our design. And all we'll do is we can choose from the options that are available. So you can see we've got the star rating. We can from 0 to 5, or we can now choose 0 to 10. So you can increase the amount of star ratings that you use. You can see we can then go and set the rating itself. Now again, I would love to see this have dynamic information because I still think that's something that's vital to making this incredibly useful. At the moment, it's a little bit limited in what you can do. So hopefully we'll have that in a update that comes out soon. 
please give us that dynamic option. Okay, so we can then choose the font awesome or we can choose Unicode, however we want to display our actual star ratings. And then we can do the unmarked and the outline. So we can choose what kind of stars we want to use on there. We can apply a title if we want to. So you can see we can put things like rating in there, whatever. Set the alignment, different alignments upon different devices, all the things you used to expect to see when it comes to a typical widget inside Elementor. Jump to the style option and you can see we can adjust the title. So any text we're using in there, we can adjust the typography and the colors and so on. So let's just say we'll make that a little bit thicker. You can see that updates that. We'll transform that to be all uppercase. Very easy to do. Jump to the stars then and we can adjust the size, the spacing, the colors for both the marked and the unmarked stars that are going to be used. So you can see we can increase the size to make it a little bit more in keeping with the style that we've got on our site and if we want to change the color we can easily come in and say we want our click stars to be green and our other stars to be a gray so very very easy to use nothing you wouldn't expect to see there like i said the only thing i would love to see in a future iteration of this is the ability to link this to dynamic data so next up we have the new widget which is the reviews widget this is a kind of combination of the testimonial widget and the testimonial carousel but it gives us a way to create good looking reviews so it's a pro only feature so if you don't have the pro version, you're not going to get access to this. So let's just drag and drop that into a new section. You can see that now pre-fills out a simple new review widget. We've got three different options on the left-hand side for our different reviews. We can add more in there if we want. And each one of these different slides has a ton of information. We'll jump back to that in a moment. Let's take a look at some of the options that we can set this up with first. We've got the slides per view and the slides to scroll. So at the moment, we've got that set to default, so it's showing one, and we can then click and slide through and view all the different options. If you want to have more together, say, for example, you want to have two or three, you can easily come in, adjust this, and it'll automatically then assign those to be in three different columns. When you add additional ones, then you'll have the option of how you want this to sort of slide the scroll or whether you want to automatically transition, a whole ton of different options. We can control the width, we control the actual slides to scroll, so how many slides it scroll each time you move over to the next section. If we jump into the additional options, you can see we can then go through and we can control how we want to allow people to sort of navigate through. Do you want to use things like arrows? Do we want to use different kinds of pagination and so on? So let's come back and take a look at that in a moment. Let's go back to our slide section and open up one of the slides. So you can see we've got the option for an image for the individual or company, whatever we want to use as the image in there. We've then got the name of the person or the company, whatever we want to use. We've then got a title. We've also got a rating option. So if you want to use the ratings, you can add that in there. We can also go through and sort of insert different icons. We've got Twitter and Tumblr and Twitch and so on. We can even put a link to their social account that you want to use. And then we've got the review underneath. So all very self-explanatory and pretty easy to do. Let's come in and just choose someone for our image. We'll drop that one into the first one. You can see it automatically then updates to show us exactly what we've just added in there. So very, very easy. If we jump into the styles option, we can now go through and control the layout. So we can adjust the spacing between each one of these different reviews. We can adjust all that. We can adjust border size, border radius, add some padding in there if we want to, individual padding or global padding. So let's just say we'll put 30 pixels of padding in there just to open some space out. So really easy to do. You can change the background color for the header. You can adjust the gaps for the header section so you can space this out exactly how you want to. You can adjust the separator and we can then go in and we can fine tune and control every aspect of the text, image, icons, rating and navigation. So nothing in here that you wouldn't expect to see. You can control the typography, all those kinds of normal things for all of the different aspects of this widget. So you've got tons of control to make sure it sits in with the design that you're working with. So styling this new widget couldn't be easier. So what we're going to do is just jump through a couple of different options and show you how easy it is to make some changes to the look and layout. So let's just say we want to change the color of this and change some of the different parameters. Well, we can do that very easily in the style section. We can come in and we can control pretty much everything we want. So let's just say we want to change the header color and I've already got a color that I want to work with. So I'm going to tweak that if I want to. I'm going to come down and set the separator to be the same color again, but make that a little darker just so we get some separation there. And we're going to come into the background color and do the same again on this. We'll drop that color in there. If we want to make any changes, we can do that. So now we've got the basics of that put in there. Let's just change the border color as the final thing to change. And let's just make that a little darker so we can see 
the edge. So all very easy, nothing particularly complex in here. If we jump into the text section, we could easily come in and change the typography and all those kinds of things. So let's just say we want to change the spacing. So the title and the names, they're all fine. Let's just tweak the review text itself. So let's come down and we'll just come in and tweak the line height. You can see it's incredibly easy to do. We can make changes to anything we want all very easily. So nothing particularly complex in there. We can make changes to it, but it's an incredibly easy way of working. If we just jump over then into the advanced section, you can see we've got all the options then for our margins, all the things you expect in there, as well as some of the other options like the dynamic, relax, transform, scrolling effects, and so on. So again, another really cool addition, a very easy way of being able to add those reviews in there, be able to quickly tweak the look, the layout, the style, and all those kinds of things to make sure you get exactly what you want when you want to apply some social proof to a product or service that you're promoting on your website. Again, a really cool and simple to use addition. So the last thing we're going to take a look at in this latest version 2.2 update is a new feature called sitemap. So if we come in and we'll just do a search for sitemap, we drag and drop that into our design for our page. And you can see what that does now is it goes through, looks through our site and just creates a dynamically generated sitemap from all the content on our site, all the different pages. You can see we've got the sitemap options and we can come in and we can choose different things like post types, taxonomy, the sources where it's going to pull this information from, where there's pages and posts and so on. So we can tweak these different column layers. If we want to add another one in, we can simply come in, choose something else like a taxonomy, for example, and you can see now that pulls in the relevant information for the taxonomy. We can choose the source of that. So we've got categories, tags, formats, and so on. So whatever you're using and whatever you want to sort of like allow people to navigate around your site with, this new sitemap feature is going to make that very, very easy and save you a ton of time to make sure that the search engines can go through and spider your site effectively as well as allowing your end user to navigate in a very very simple fashion now, it's also worth noting at this point that this is not the same as an xml sitemap the difference being this particular sitemap is generated for humans someone to actually allow them to navigate around your site whereas an xml sitemap is more geared towards the search engines however this is still going to help your rankings because it's going to make your site that little bit easier to find your way around for both yourself and the spiders like i say don't get those two things confused they are very very different beasts Okay, so you can see it's very easy to do. If you want to come in, we can just tweak the layout. We can do things like the number of columns are going to be used. So we can drop that down to three, for example. We can choose the title tag that's going to be used. We can make sure this fits in with the HTML structure we want to use and how relevant or how important we think it is based upon where on your site or the page is going to be located. You can add no follow links on there if you want to as well. So you can click and just enable that. If we jump into the additional options, you can see we can exclude various different things. We can also avoid duplicates and make sure that we don't display protected posts. We have that option to display or hide those if we want to. Jump over to the style, you can see nothing you wouldn't expect in there. We can do things like adjusting the indent. We can adjust the padding, the title, colors list, and so on. And we can do things like change the bullet itself. So you can see we can easily switch between various different options, or we can set it to be this none on there whatsoever. So it's a very, very simple different widget that's been added in there, but incredibly useful when you're building a site, especially when you're dealing with much more complex and larger websites. It'll give you a real boost in allowing people to get around your site quickly and easily. So there we go. Those are the new features that have been brought out or updated in version 2.2 of Elementor Pro and in some cases with the free version of Elementor, in this example, the stars. What do you think of these new updates? Do you think they're game changers for you in the way that you work or are they something that you've never really used in the past and you might be interested to sort of like take a look at including them in your next site? Let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to get your feedback on these new features and what you think of them. As always, let me know in the comments section below. Well, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, but let me know what you didn't like about the video. It helps me create better content for you in the future. As always, if you'd like to support the channel, please consider using those affiliate links in the description below. Costs you no more money, but it does give a small percentage back to the channel and help support what we do. As always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.